So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming a real gentleman and a real submariner, Vice Admiral John Nick Nicholson. Thank you very much, Admiral. Mrs. Sissel, Admiral Robertson, Admiral Kirsch, Admiral Marler, Captain Frost and other previous CEOs of Stonewall Jackson, Captain Stegel, Captain Thorne, men of Stonewall Jackson, past and present, families and friends. It's an honor and a real privilege for me to help celebrate our ship's honorable retirement and her contributions, which with other SSBNs were largely responsible for the prevention of nuclear war and the end of the Cold War. I'm particularly delighted to see uh, Miss Julia Sissel here and her mother, uh, Julia McAfee. I haven't seen them since, uh, since the launching over 30 years ago. Uh, Julia's grandmother, Mrs. Randolph Preston, had been asked to be the sponsor, but she wanted Julia to break the champagne so that she could enjoy the relationship with the ship for many years. Welcome, Julia. What a thoughtful and perceptive grandmother you have, and you and your family honor it. Participation in a decommissioning ceremony is one of the most difficult things for Navy men and women. Each ship and each crew has been an important part of our lives and continues to be so even after we retire and after the ships are decommissioned. There's nothing like it in any of the other services and there surely is nothing like it in the industry. Believe me, I found that out. That feeling and bonding is particularly strong for those who are fortunate enough to be plank owners and who had the responsibility and privilege of giving birth to the ship. For plank owners who arrive early, it's normally a particular treat and thrill to be able to ride the ship down the ways at launching and to participate in the celebrations immediately following. Alas, such was not the case at the launching of Stonewall Jackson since President Kennedy had been assassinated only eight days prior to the launching. Accordingly, the ceremony was somber, and the programs carried two ribbons of black, twin ribbons of black, and the po post-launching ceremonies were canceled. We experienced another difficulty during the initial sea trials, which Captain Frost and I remember very well. As you all remember, we, there was a rig for Rickover bill, which all ships used to accommodate uh, Admiral Rickover's quirks and to try to make the sea trials as smooth as possible. The bill contained vital things such as grapes, which the Admiral ate and then proceeded to spit all the seeds around the XO stateroom, uh, lemon drops, chief's khakis, and several other pages of items. But one of the key items was a, a civilian technician to maintain a typewriter, which was a predecessor to today's word processors. And that was to be used to type the 50 or 60 letters that the Admiral wrote to key congressmen and key officials during the sea trials. And we, we contacted the company who had furnished the technician for all of the previous SSBNs but they declined, saying that the great market for these typewriters, which the previous COs had promised, never developed. Only after pleading with, this, uh, with the company, and by myself and the Captain Frost and others, did the company agree to send the technician and we breathed easier. Came the great day when we were gonna go on sea trials and we proceeded from Mare Island Shipyard, past Alcatraz, out under the Golden Gate Bridge and headed out to sea and things were just going swimmingly till suddenly Captain Frost, the gold crew skipper who was keeping an eye on the Admiral, came up to the bridge and said, we've got a real problem. The Admiral wanted to see me immediately. 
I went below and the Admiral was furious. He just found out that the typewriter technician was on board and he wanted him off immediately. I told him that the technician was needed to ensure that his letters could be completed uh, correctly and on time and that he'd been on board for all the other uh, Mare Island uh, submarines. He said, what if, that, what if the submarine sank during sea trials and one of the people who got lost had been on board just to type my letters? Get him off or I'm canceling sea trials. Well, frankly, the thought of that thought had never occurred to me. But having no alternative, I dashed to the bridge and we sig signaled the San Francisco light ship, which was just ahead, to send a boat to take the passenger ashore. We apologized quickly, dumped the technician into this tiny skiff, which arrived and took the technician clear into the Oakland piers where they left him. We continued the trials and managed to keep the typewriters going, and the sea trials were tremendously successful. I personally apologized to the technician when we got back, and we had him out for lunch, and we gave him a letter and a plaque, but I sincerely doubt that he went on the sea trials for the next submarine, or probably any other submarine, in the, ever again. Despite the, the difficult be beginning, however, Stonewall Jackson proceeded to excel. Nine months after launching, she was delivered a month early at a savings to the Navy of a million dollars, and both crews, as well as Mare Island Shipyard, were praised for their performances. After successful shakedown cruises and missile firings by both crews, she completed PSA and proceeded to conduct 82 successful deterrent patrols, and I'm delighted to see that she's still continuing to, to excel. God bless you and the United States of America. I will now read my decommissioning orders from Commander, Naval Sea Systems Command, to Commanding Officer, USS Stonewall Jack subject, decommissioning. At the completion of deactivation and when directed by Commander, Puget Sound Naval Shipyard, decommission USS Stonewall Jackson. Exo calls attention. Crew, hut 10, hut. Officer deck. The distinctive mark of a ship commissioned in the United States Navy, other than the National Ensign, is the commissioning pennant. In the days of sail power, this long red, white, and blue pennant was flown from the main mast, which made it very simple to distinguish ships of the line from ordinary merchant vessels. When hauled down, it is traditional that a departing commanding officer receive the commissioning pennant flown over his ship. Although the Stonewall Jackson will continue to fly a commissioning pennant until the actual decommissioning, today Master Chief Wynn will present the ceremonial commissioning pennant to Commander Thorne, symbolizing the time when the pennant will be hauled down for the last time. Admiral Nicholson, as the first commanding officer of USS Stonewall Jackson, and in appreciation for being our guest speaker today, I'd like to present you with the Smith Ceremonial Commissioning Pennant. <laughs> Guests, please rise. Chaplain Dean will now deliver the benediction. Let us pray. You have taught us, O oh God, that there is a time for everything, a time for war and a time for peace. As Stonewall Jackson prepares to lay down her weapons of war, may she live proudly in the memories of those who sailed her through oceans and seas. Bless Commander Stagel with success that builds upon the foundation of good leadership in this place.
go with Commander Thorne and the combined blue and gold team as together they bring Stonewall Jackson to her peaceful harbor. Sight Boys, host. Gentlemen, this concludes the deactivation ceremony. All guests are cordially invited for general visiting and towards the ship to commence at 1300. Crew, dismissed.